Hey train fans, I'm Rocky Canyon Arrow, and this is the Rockwell Canyon Road. Alright, so on today's episode, we're going to talk about batteries. It's probably one of my most commonly asked questions on the YouTube channel. Uh, how do I run my trains? Do I use track power, or do I have batteries on board? Well, obviously the answer is, I have batteries on board the trains. So today we're going to talk about ways that you can do that with your own trains, and maybe save a little money at the same time. Now when it comes to battery power on these G-Scale trains, there's usually two schools of thought. One school of thought is you have a battery car, and then your engines can connect to that. So usually it's a box car or a passenger car. Now if you're feeling a little more prototypical, you might actually put the battery right in one of the locomotives. And that way the locomotive has full autonomy, it can go in and out of sidings, it can pull a long freight train or a short freight train, it doesn't much matter. It's not tied down to any particular train car. And now within that class, there are two sort of subdivisions between that. Uh, some folks like to have a battery and receiver in each individual locomotive, and they can actually use the remote control system to tie them all together and have them all run in unison together. If you have a higher output radio system, you might be actually, actually able to run more than one locomotive off of that same system. Knowing that my airwire system has a maximum output of 10 amps, I decided that it was probably okay on these Alco FAs to run at least three of them off of the same radio receiver and battery. So on this set, I have three powered engines and one dummy engine. You can see the red and black connectors between the B units and one of the A units that provide power and lighting control as well. This nearest B unit is the only engine that has a battery and receiver in it. It can actually run by itself without any cab units whatsoever. Although, it probably look pretty strange doing so. Here I'm demonstrating just how freely the dummy engine moves. The motor blocks have been removed and wheels have been placed in the journals. These are actually Pico 35mm wheels. They sell the wheels in ball bearing and standard version. These are just the standard version and they roll quite nicely. So while on most of my freight trains, I generally like to have the batteries in the locomotives, for my passenger trains, my my thought is the other way around. I prefer to have the batteries and receiver and controls in the passenger cars. That way I can switch around the engines. I have a pretty big collection of engines, so to have batteries and receivers and everything would be very expensive. You can also see the versatility in the system, uh, where I could take one of these passenger engines and tie it on with one of my New York Central Freight engines. I could take a New York Central engine, have it do passenger duty, and we can even take that uh, GP9, which is actually a, is a dummy uh, with, with lighting control, and have that play all on too. So to wrap it up, outside of passenger trains, I generally prefer to have the batteries on board the locomotives. Sometimes they share power with other engines. Uh, my GP9 is a great example of that. It shares power with other GP9s. Uh, my GP38 is kind of a solo bird. I have another GP38 that has its own receiver and, and battery, and they run together. The Alco S4 runs itself and can power other engines as well. And even Thomas the Tank Engine has his own battery and receiver on board. So while it's great to have a battery and receiver on each engine, it does get pretty expensive. I do like to share, as you know. Um, there are a couple of rules of thumb that I follow. USA Trains engines use a lot more current than Aristocraft engines. So in the case of these Guilford engines, the GP38 has the battery and receiver and the U25 is a receiver. Now this long set is kind of interesting. Only two of the engines have batteries and receivers, and they're set to the same channel, so the other engines are essentially acting as slugs off of those uh, mother engines. Alright, and knowing the uh, power output of the uh, receiver being around 10 amps, I know that I can safely run three Aristocraft engines off of one receiver, and two USA Trains engines off the same receiver. That's my general rule of thumb. It may vary based on your load and grades and so forth. All right, if you have questions, please leave them in the comment box. I'm Rocky Canyonero, and that's how we do trains around here.